Good speed. <laughs> Not enough bat speed, though, to catch up with that one. Nothing in two to Gibson, and the crowd encouraging Martinez to strike out the side here in the third. Martinez gets all three. With the fastball again, four strikeouts in a row for Pedro Martinez, and after two and a half, the Red Sox have a 1-0 lead over the Mariners at Fenway on the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Back at Fenway Park, the Red Sox have the 1-0 lead as we move to the bottom of the third. Well, the 98 Red Sox is sure to be action-packed and exciting. Bring your group, company, or family to one of the many special discount and fundraising games at Fenway this season. Call group sales at 617-262-1915. And time called by home plate umpire John Shulock just as Jamie Moyer was set to throw the first pitch of the inning. And now Lou Pinella out of the Mariner dugout. Nomar apparently asked out of the batter's box right at the last moment. Well, there comes a point when the umpire should not call timeout because what's going to happen is the pitcher could hurt himself. So uh, a little bit late there by John Shulak, and I think that's why Pinella uh, coming out said, "Look, you know, let's, you got to call it. Uh, let's make it a little earlier than that." Garcia Parra, Valentin, and Vaughn, top of the Red Sox order here in the third against Moyer. Here it is in real speed again. As soon as Nomar got in that box, Moya was ready to go almost like a quick pitch. Mm. And uh, Shulak waving it off. But uh, well, maybe no, uh, the way Shulak was gesturing there, it, it almost seemed that Nomar didn't say anything, that Shulak was just saying, no, that was too fast. Well, what, what Moya's trying to do, too, is throw off the timing of Nomar. You know, he has that little routine he goes through when he gets in the batter's box, and Moya trying to break that up. So a little gamesmanship going on. Now Shulak gives Moyer the cue. Now he's got to wait for center field and Griffey to get back in position. And the first pitch is low for ball one. If you joined us late, Red Sox with a first inning run, John Valentin with a one out single, and then a two out double to left center by Jim Leritz to score Valentin all the way from first. Garcia Parra grounded out to short his first time up. This time towards center field and Griffey shielding the eyes and recording the first out. Kind of went unnoticed yesterday, but Griffey also made a tremendous uh, defensive play in center field. He makes about one a game, so. Kind of get spoiled watching him. After everything that happened in the ninth inning, there were a lot of things that kind of got lost about yesterday's ball game. Even with all the pregame hoopla and expectation, Brian Rose kind of faded into the background somewhat after yesterday's ball game with that great comeback in the ninth. But certainly a very encouraging outing for him. Valentin reaches out towards center field. Base hit. Out of the reach of Alex Rodriguez. So Valentin is two for two. Let's pause 10 seconds right now for station identification on the 68 Sports Television Network. You're watching Red Sox Baseball on WABU-TV Channel 68 Boston, WNBU-TV Channel 21 Concord, New Hampshire, and WZBU-TV Channel 58 Vineyard Haven, Cape Cod. Back at Fenway Park, Red Sox leading the Mariners 1-0, one, one out in the bottom of the third. Doug Brown in for Sean McDonough, joined by Jerry Remy and Mo Vaughn, who struck out back in the first inning against Moyer. Up now with Valentin on first and one out. And Valentin is off with the pitch, and the Red Sox had their second stolen base of the day. 
Well, the Red Sox obviously have picked up something in Jamie Moya because uh, both guys that have run this afternoon, Lewis and now Valentin, have had terrific jumps. And I think what they're doing is they're going on the very first move for Moya. And if he throws the first base, so what? They're going to keep going and hope to draw a bad throw. That play actually a little closer than it looked to the naked eye, but the second stolen base of the day for the Red Sox. For John Valentin, his first steal of the season. And you talked earlier, Jerry, about Moyer's delivery being somewhat slow, and then you add in all the breaking pitches that he throws. Another advantage to the runners. Well, the other thing, too, Doug, is that unless he steps off and throws the first, his move to first base is also slow. So if you get picked off, keep going a second, you got a chance to get in safely. Moyer working to Vaughn. And the 1 1 pitch is in the dirt. Valentin thought about it, got well off the bag at second, but Wilkins was able to find it in time. Yeah, when you're already in scoring position at second, you've got to make sure that you can go in standing up at third base. And any doubt at all, just get back to the bag because, as I mentioned, you're already in scoring position. Here's what happened to Mo in the first inning against Jamie Moyer. Fastball away, fastball away, and again, fastball away uh, for the strikeout. So nothing tricky, just all fastballs and all staying away from Mo Vaughn. The 2 1, down low again, 3 and 1. Here's where Moyer is likely to pull a string on Mo. A 3 1 count, you expect maybe to get the fastball. He could go at the changeup. Valentin getting the lead at second. And Vaughn cracking one deep to right center field toward the triangle and one hop against the wall. Valentin will score easily, and Mo Vaughn has an RBI double. The Red Sox with a 2 0 lead. You see what a difference here, location of pitch makes. In that first at bat, the fastballs were all away from Mo Vaughn, but this pitch is going to get an awful lot of the plate. And Mo goes out, hooks the ball right to the bullpen area. RBI number 13 now for Mo. That ties in for the league lead with Juan Gonzalez. Actually, the Mariners and Gibson did a pretty good job uh, chasing this ball down, but easily in the score will be Valentin with a second run. And the first pitch to Jim Laritz is taken deep to left field and into the screen for a two-run homer. This afternoon, his first home run for the Red Sox. Well, we mentioned yesterday, Doug, uh, when you get past the three hitter, the rest of those guys are going to start doing something against lefties, and uh, Jim Lairitz getting it started here. Cleanup hitter cleans up the bases with the home run. 4 0 Red Sox. Those three runs happened very quickly. First pitch strike to Troy O'Leary. The single by Valentin, then the steal. The double by Vaughn and the two-run homer by Leiritz. And O'Leary hits it sharply. That'll be extra bases into the right field corner. Trying to dig it out is Gibson, but O'Leary will have a stand-up double. Four straight hits by the Red Sox after one out here in the third. And it looks like the Red Sox very happy uh, that a lefty's pitching and it's not Randy Johnson. <laughs> Fastball inside and O'Leary gets the head of the bat out with the line drive right down that right field line. And of course Troy who's been out a couple of days back in the lineup with a bang this afternoon. 
The Red Sox with six hits in the ball game, four of them for extra bases. Damon Buford now grounded back to Moyer in the second inning. Pitch down low. 2 and 0 on Buford. And already warm up action in the Mariner bullpen. Bob Wells, one of the guys who did not work yesterday, swinging a pitch down out of the strike zone by Buford. 2 and 1. Buford very high and behind short Rodriguez out and in comes Glenn Allen Hill to make the catch and back quickly to second is O'Leary almost strayed a little bit too far. The Lairitz home run making it four to nothing in favor of the Red Sox and a reminder that for each Red Sox home run on a TV 68 telecast this season Dunkin Donuts will make a contribution to the Jimmy Fund. The Red Sox hope that you will help too. And already in uh, what the 12th inning of the weekend the Red Sox have hit four home runs here at Fenway. Scott Hatterberg for his second trip grounded the short his first time. Hatterberg waits for the breaking pitch in the dirt. The Red Sox have some lefties in that lineup today and a lot of managers will throw left handed hitters against Moya because of that change up that he features. Figure they might be taking one pitch away from him uh, with the left handers in the lineup. Hatterberg leads the Red Sox with four two out runs batted in so far this season trying to pick up another one here. One and one on Hatterberg. Tapped on the ground. Segui will handle this one himself. And Moyer finally gets out of the inning. The Red Sox string together four consecutive hits, including a two run bomb by Jim Lairitz that just crawled over the top of the wall. And the Red Sox lead Lupinella's Mariners 4 0 after three on the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Three completed Fenway, Red Sox four, Mariners nothing. Fans around the world can now log on to www.redsox.com, the official website of the Boston Red Sox. This easy to navigate Red Sox homepage offers fans the ease of purchasing tickets online and is your first source of breaking news, history, and information on one of the greatest sports franchises in history. Red Sox baseball, what a game. And what a great group of kids on kids' opening day here at Fenway Park. Kids all over the ballpark, inside and out. Several hours before the game, uh, a lot of performers, various kids groups performing, uh, entertaining fans outside Fenway today. Joey Cora bidding for the Mariners' first hit, and he drops it into left center field. Martinez had gone perfect through the first three, but Cora breaks it up with the Mariners' first hit. And Joey Cora now has a 10 game hitting streak to start this season. Rodriguez. It's like the fastball. He started him with the change back to the fastball, and Cora will drop that base hit in the center field. So, uh, Cora, who had a terrific year last year, his best as a major leaguer, having a good start again here in '98. Joey Cora extended the hitting streak yesterday with an infield hit in the ninth inning. Gets one earlier today. Alex Rodriguez now the batter. Ball one. Rodriguez flied to center in the first inning. That was the only ball hit to the outfield against Martinez before the base hit by Cora. Cora 
holding and the called strike to Alex Rodriguez. The Red Sox fans are going to have the same feeling I think coming to the ballpark when Martinez is pitching as they did when Clemens pitched you know five or six years ago when he was winning the Cy Youngs and you know a chance to see a lot of strikeouts and always the possibility of seeing a no hitter when a guy like this pitches. He has had a one hitter but not the no no yet. Just to have that same feeling when Nolan Ryan would take them out and of course Ryan had a ton of no hitters and always a bunch of strikeouts. That's the kind of pitcher Martinez is actually a better pitcher but he'll throw more strikes he very seldom walks anybody. Cora the runner at first. The one two Rodriguez spoils it off to the right and out of play. Coming into today, just five walks for Pedro Martinez. So he's now thrown 17 innings this year. Five walks and 24 strikeouts to this point. Now last year, 67 walks and 305 strikeouts. That's a pretty good ratio in any league. And there's another strikeout on a tough breaking pitch, Rodriguez becomes the fifth victim of the day for Martinez. Now that's his first this afternoon on the changeup and it's to the right handed hitter almost like the screwball down and in on the right hander. He's got three on a fastball one on a breaking ball and this is the first on the changeup and you can see how far out in front Rodriguez is. And now Ken Griffey Junior. These two guys facing each other for the first time today. Griffey tried to hit through the shift his first time up. Hit the ball on a line right up the middle, but that's where Garcia Parra was playing, right behind the second base bag where he is now. In Seattle, when they had the shift on, Griffey bunted the third base to try to see if the Red Sox would change that. They did not. They stayed with it. And it paid off in the last at bat because that would have been a base hit up the middle. Martinez evens the count at one and one. Griffey made a comment after the series in Seattle, Jerry, that with the shift on he thinks he has a better chance of guessing correctly on pitches because with the shift on he figures he's going to get fastballs in and breaking balls away and he was four for eleven in the series against the shift he hits this ball very well toward left center ranging over is Buford for the catch deep onto the warning track Griffey's bid falls just a little bit short. See Griffey peeking back at the flag, uh, wondering where the wind had gone, blowing out toward left field. Hit this ball pretty well. Uh, to a big part of the ballpark, though. Back to the 379. And Damon Buford back to make the catch with a couple of feet to spare. It's interesting. Yesterday, that ball, Larry said, wouldn't have been a home run the way the wind was blowing. It would have knocked it down and probably off the wall. Mm -hmm. So Cora is still at first. Now two outs. And Edgar Martinez. Who hit a little accidental ground ball in front of Hatterberg back in the second inning? Scott threw him out before Edgar even realized that the ball was in fair territory. Martinez with the quick toss to first. Well, that's another thing. Mo Vaughn certainly <laughs> knows by now that he has to be ready at first base because he's about 95 to home plate and uh, maybe 94 to first base. He can handcuff the first baseman. Martinez with the long set and then low to Edgar Martinez. 2 and 0 the count. Edgar Martinez breaking out of a season opening batting slump yesterday with three hits, three for four, three runs batted in. And he was also victimized. Robbed of extra bases by that great catch from Damon Buford in the first inning. Fouls this one away. Two and one the count on Edgar. And 
up tight. Three and one now on Martinez. Well, a throw back from Hatterberg uh, went over the head of Martinez, but uh, fortunately, Coro was heading back to first base, didn't see it. Well, now, we just talked about the very few walks that Martinez allows, and here he is, three and one. I will give him one walk a game. I mean, <laughs> I'm not complaining too much about it. Not yet. Full count now. Right in with the fastball. Just fouling off the 3 2 pitch. Lunging and getting a foul ball over the roof on the right field side. Been plenty of heat uh, on that mound the last couple of days to warm up Fenway Park. Randy Johnson <laughs> yesterday and Pedro this afternoon. We talked about the uh, contrast in Lou Pinella's starting pitchers from Johnson yesterday to Moyer today. The Red Sox will work the contrast tomorrow. Martinez today and Wakefield tomorrow. Another foul ball away onto the roof. Same spot for Martinez. And for the Mariners tomorrow, by the way, Jeff Facero makes his first start of the season coming off the disabled list. The 3 2 again, and again, just a piece. Wearing out Joey Cora. Over at first base. <laughs> Payoff pitch number three. And another one fouled away. Now one thing the players uh, don't have to deal with here this afternoon are the tough shadows yesterday with that three o'clock start uh, shadows were a big part of it this afternoon of course one o'clock uh, not a factor at all right now and a lot of the players in the Red Sox clubhouse were saying it was nasty not only was Johnson nasty but it was also tough to see the ball because of the shadows Martinez throwing strikes but not that time there is ball four great at bat for Edgar Martinez he finally works the first walk of the day from Pedro. Well, Pedro doesn't know how to act today. I mean, there's four runs on the board for him. But <laughs> first game was a two nothing game. It was a one to one when he left uh, in that matchup with Finley and Anaheim. So he has not had a lot of runs to work with. Well, last season, this was a regular occurrence for Martinez. Uh, 31 starts with the Expos last year. He received two runs or less of support in 16 of the 31 starts. And of course, uh, two runs or less in his first two starts with the Red Sox. But a little bit more help offensively early in this one. Two on now for the Mariners though with two outs and David Segui. Nothing in one. This guy's teammates up in uh, Montreal but Segui has also faced him and he is now 0 for 11 in his career against Martinez. With five strikeouts. In those 11 at bats. Grounded to short his first time today. Segui shared the American League Player of the Week honors for the first week of the season with Quinton McCracken of the Devil Rays. Segui, like Martinez, formerly with the Expos. And the 1 1 pitch fouled away. Devil Rays doing okay. They're 4 and 4 on the season, third place. They lead the league in hitting with a 323 team average. Most of the experts figuring that uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks would have the better ball club of the two exhibition, uh, two exhibition expansion teams. And of course, still a long way to go, but. Absolutely. The Devil Rays surprising here in the early going. 1 2 to Segui. And he's another strikeout victim. Number six for Pedro Martinez. He gets two in that inning and gets out of the two on jam. 
Red Sox have a 4 0 lead through three and a half at Fenway, and we'll be back after these words from your local stations. This is the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Red Sox have the 4 0 lead on the Dunkin' Donuts scoreboard. The Red Sox and Mariners wrap up the first series of Fenway this season tomorrow afternoon. Tune into On Deck beginning at 12.30, followed by Red Sox Baseball. Don't miss the action over most of our 68 Sports Television Network. Kerry, I'm very upset. My 152 game consecutive stretch of On Decks ended a couple of weeks ago. You were part of it yesterday, though. You still had an appearance <laughs> on On Deck. Called strike from Jamie Moyer to Darren Lewis leading off the bottom of the fourth. John Holt will be hosting on deck tomorrow afternoon. Hit sharply and on the backhand. Cora can't come up with the short hop. That should go as a base hit for Darren Lewis. But we'll wait to be sure. I think it's one that maybe Cora would like to have back and try again, but the ball hit awful hard by Lewis going the other way. Second time he's been on, second time he's going to Cora this afternoon. I had to play it on the short hop and right underneath the glove. Tough hop right on the right off the end of the bat. Two from Darren Lewis. It is a base hit. The Red Sox seventh hit of the day and missing the bunt attempt was Mike Benjamin Lewis able to get back. Rick Wilkins taking a shot at first base. Benjamin tapped back to Moyer his first time up. Moyer hasn't walked anybody. And again, Benjamin with the bunt. This time a good one right down the line, and Moyer forced to play it. To Segui for the out, one to three on the sacrifice. Now leaving with the four-run lead at Jimmy Williams in this inning, playing for the one run. Number nine hit a Benjamin. Perfect bunt right down the first base line. I think for a while Moyer maybe wanted to let it go foul, but it didn't look like it was going to roll foul, so he had to get the out. Plays himself with a base run, a sidearm throw, and gets the first out of the inning. But the Red Sox have a man in scoring position. So Benjamin gets the job done on the sacrifice, and now Nomar Garcia Parra. Moyer not hurrying that time, Jerry, after trying to quick pitch Nomar the last time up. He's just trying to do something to throw off the timing. Uh, Nomar has his ritual he'll go through when he gets in the box. And he was just trying to uh, quick pitch him a little bit. Check swing ruled a strike by Don Denkinger. The 0 1. Now the count even at 1 and 1. Nomar Garcia Parra with an eight game hitting streak riding today. He's hitting every ball game except the opener. Out in Oakland. Moyer takes a double take on Lewis and chases him back. Nomar also able to extend his hitting streak in the ninth inning yesterday, as Joey Cora did. Garcia Parra, of course, with the big RBI single. And on a line to right field, falling fast and headed for the corner. Lewis is around third. He will score. Gibson having trouble digging it out. And Garcia Parra will be easily into third. We'll see how they rule it. Tough play for Charles Gibson. Tough play for any right fielder, but especially somebody who's never been here before, Jerry. Now, once that ball gets down around that foul pole, it becomes very difficult for the right fielder. And it looked like a little bobble as he tried to pick the ball up and get it in quickly. I would think it's going to go as a double and an error on the right field, but we'll have to wait for the scoring. That's that wall going straight out, and you see Gibson getting tangled up uh, in the wall. The fans are trying to distract them. Fans would never do that, would they? Oh, sure they would. That's part of the home field advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Rolled a triple, and you saw Nomar's 11 triples leading the American League a year ago. Pitch a ball to John Valentin. 
The run batted in for Garcia Parra, his eighth of the season, and of course it extends his hitting streak now to nine in a row. The Red Sox with a five nine.